Thank you for staying with us. Now, after years of service in the public sector, many senior citizens are pushed into a life of penury. This is because many of them do not get paid their retirement benefits on time. Nigeria is ranked as one of the countries with the worst retirement benefits, which means for elder citizens who get paid their benefits, very little can be achieved, as these entitlements are minimal, especially when compared with the number of years and diligence they put into their work. To change this narrative, some stakeholders are now pushing for better welfare and retirement packages for public servants. Out, uh, out of this agenda is the establishment of retirement homes, improved health care systems, and better access to health care for retirees. This, they say, will reduce the burden on them and make them live longer. Joining me now is author and policy strategist Babatunde Raimi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us in TVC Breakfast. Okay. Let's uh, understand the problem, where we are coming from, because years for years now, uh, this issue of retirees, uh, elder statesmen and women who have served the country not getting that benefit that they put in the work into the work they have done over the years and at the end of the day one wonders uh, what really where did we get it wrong especially with this issue of ensuring that they get that benefit and that these people are treated in a dignified manner such that they realize that their labor was not in vain at the end of the day um thank you you know, under the old scheme, which we call the defined benefit scheme, that mm. used to be the problem. And then um, under the Obasanjo regime, to solve this problem of late retirement payment, you know, to reduce the sufferings of these people who have served their nation meritoriously, um, that's why they brought in the contributory pension scheme mm -hmm. to replace the old scheme, yes. which was plagued with delays and the likes. And... Um, in fairness to the government, when the contributory pension scheme started, um, I think, um, 2004, mm. one month after retirement, three months after retirement, you could access your retirement. When it started? When mm. it started. One month, three months, mm. until they started uh, seeing backlogs. So the CPS, the contributory pension scheme, was meant to correct the ills of the defined benefit scheme, and somehow we uh, began to find ourselves going back to mm. delayed pension. And um, it's what, what do you think is at the heart of it? Corruption? Well, like I've said earlier, uh, government saying that there are no funds for now. I just think that uh, the government should be sincere with us at all times. Let's know what is happening part time because from the contributory pension scheme, mm. what it means is that if you started from your date of first appointment mm. till June 2004, you have some money with government. Then from July 2004 till your date of retirement, it became contributory. So if I have some money with you prior to the contributory pension scheme, and I transited to the contributed pension scheme and I retire. I think it should not be difficult for you to pay your own part, which you owe me, mm -hmm. which to a large extent was bonded uh, with the CBA. It should not be difficult to assess your own part. So that government part that is not released on time is what the causes is. the delay about pension. Now, a government is uh, looking to come up with, implement the Servicom Charter and saying that it could be better to ensure better and efficient administration of you know pensions in the country i wonder if you're confident that this could turn things around with the happiness uh within the last three months i think i'm confident that it could turn things around because um, i'm an incurable optimist about project nigeria mm -hmm. and um, i can tell you that the hospitals between three days ago and today we witness less patients in terms of people age 60 and above. Because talking about this delayed retirement, whatever, the president just approved the release of funds for the payment of those who retired from, I think, um, May 2020 till December 2020, who have been verified. Mm. And let me tell you, you know, this, when you are sure that money is coming, bank alert cures so many sicknesses. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as it is now, I, I have a retiree, I know a retiree, who said she needs about two million for a knee injury. Hmm. And the thing has been there since, I'm an immigration officer. 
and she has been praying for government to release her pension to her. So one told me yesterday, he said, ah, now that government has released our money, I can use my money to buy RAM for Salah. So if these people work for this money, we, I must say that if government is not doing well, we are quick to criticize them. And if government does something right, we should also be quick to celebrate them. This is a very good thing from the government. I celebrate the government for releasing their crude right. I also celebrate PENCOM and the board of PENCOM because I know that without them pushing this, it couldn't have come to bear. So I think for now, they are happy with the government. So I think it will work. Oh, okay. Now, you, you mentioned something, talking about verification. It does seem to put also bottleneck in the process for a lot of them. I, I mean, if you have worked in the police and your details are intact, and then you have contributed, like you mentioned earlier, what then is the need to verify me again? When you have my details, seeing that I have followed through all of these processes before now. Uh, you know, like I mentioned before, the verification is um, the verification is actually called Federal Government Retirement Bond Verification Exercise. So what it means is that by the time a year to your retirement, you are supposed to go for this verification. Mm. I call it Operation Show Yourself. So already you have your funds, your contribution, 7.5% 7 from you, 7.5% from your employer as of 2004. Before the law was amended, I think September 2014, mm. to 8% employer. 10% government. So the verification is to let government know the amount that is due to you under the old scheme. You know, so that right. they can budget you against the next year when you are supposed to retire. So as to ensure efficient and quick payment of pension. Mm. So now if we say now that we want to boost, boost um, the, the retirement uh, benefits process, wh what are we looking at to put into proper perspective? The first things I think retirees are looking at is maximum one month after their retirement, pay them. Because they have nothing else to they fall have back on. So if you pay them, at least they know that they have something to fall back on. Because as I speak with you, you know, a child, for instance, is supposed to take care of the parent. But how many children self can take care of themselves, talk less of taking care of their own, you know? Right. So if these people have worked, let them have access to their funds so that at least they can take care of their health, they can take care of some pertinent need that will keep them alive. Mm. Is that all that you think would address all of their needs? Government should also, for instance, the federal government just uh, established the National Senior Citizen Center. Yes. And I found one floor there where they said, uh, it's from uh, age of admittance is 70 years and above. It should be brought to age 60 and up. If you are 60, you're already a senior citizen. You know, I, I, I made a Google search and I realized that according to the National Population Commission, we have about 9.3 million senior citizens age 60 and above mm. in Nigeria. So if we begin to cater for these people, you know, take care of their health, take, you know, set up socioeconomic programs, intervention programs that can help them. And I was also happy, that's also a plus for the federal government, that they have given, you know, they now send funds allocation directly to the local government. Let's have a senior citizen center in every local government. While the mm -hmm. national, senior, uh, national Senior Citizen Center partner with National Orientation Agency, partner with local government to, you know, healthcare, um, things that will bring them social economic activity, that will make them, that will not make them look like non-entities. And also, so many intervention programs, but the first one is to ensure that you <laughs> pay them is. on time. Now, uh, you, you mentioned something. Can states begin to own some of these things? Because the federal government cannot do everything. Can states come in, you know, as a stopgap measure to also addressing these issues, have these centers like you have mentioned, perhaps make some contributions to the life of, of these people? Um, yes, I think, I think that the states can also do it. You know, it's all about funds. When, and you see, when you want to do something, as long as you are intentional, nothing, nothing is impossible to a willing mind. We mm -hmm. should care for all citizens. We should care for our infants. We should care for us. We should care for our seniors. At some point, they can't take care of themselves. So it is our duty as policymakers to ensure that we create these policies that create an enabling environment for them. So states should also create these centers for them. Many people are retired, but they are not tired. When you create maybe a senior citizen center in every local government, for instance, there they will have entertainment. They can be, you know, empowerment programs. They in fact, we were, were speaking with someone recently, and he said that this issue of retirement age and all of it, and he said that mentorship 
you know, is something that is we are losing in the society. Mm -hmm. And these people can serve as that because of the wealth of experience they have had over the years walking, which is something that a lot he is saying perhaps we should begin to explore. Don't just retire people and cut them off like that. Maybe create an office for them where they can serve as perhaps one way or the other, having a capacity that could help build the systems we have, beat education, whatever it is that these people retired from. I agree with you because without a mentor, you can be messed up. Mm. Just like the military authorities said that, you know, they are veterans. They are calling on their veterans, calling on anybody to say, we need you. You are retired, but not tired. But even if you create an office and the likes, you know that directly or indirectly, you still have to appreciate them. Money will still come out from somewhere. Where Definitely. will the money come from? When we see in the news every time, no job, no job, no job. Even Ferra Gomez coming out to say no job, no job. The people that are working now don't want to retire. They will go and falsify a declaration because they want to still remain in service, which will still affect them by the time they retire. So mm -hmm. what I want to say and I've always been saying is that let us start planning for our retirement from our first day at work. As individuals. As individuals. So if we start doing that, we are, we'll be helping ourselves and relieving government of a larger percentage of burden. You know, when you start planning for your retirement earlier, you talk about your retirement home, you talk about your health, you talk about every, you know, everything that will make you comfortable. But how retirement. easy is it for people to plan for their retirement where you have a minimum wage that is 30,000 naira? As low as that. While, while we are still, when, when we talk about planning for retirement, you know, you realize that even if your salary is 10,000 naira, it's mm. just like an orange. If you leak orange now, you will never take the seed. So out of that mega 10,000 naira, you can put 1,000 naira somewhere. Mm. You can put, you cannot, you can, see, let me tell you, challenges will always come. The more you advance, the more challenges will come. But the truth is, if you fail to start planning for your retirement now, and maybe you depend on your children, you might be shocked tomorrow. You know, children, like I said, have not been able to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Is it government that will not take so care of them? So it begins from the mindset. Mindset. Where parents, because oftentimes you hear some parents say, these are my children and my retirement plan. So <laughs> it begins from that changing that mindset. Yeah, and, and that children, it doesn't work again. Mm. It doesn't work again at all. Because now, if I ask, if you gather 10 youths together and ask them, when was the last time you sent money to your parents? Mm. So from the part of the workers, start planning for what, start using your black air to work for your white air. Because when that time comes, see, you are only, you are, to a large extent, you are only as relevant as long as you are in service. Mm. Once you leave service by the time you come to the office today come tomorrow you know the, uh, that person is coming again do you understand so on the part of individual workers let us start planning for our retirement from our first day of income on the part of government let us be sincere and intentional with our retirement plan mm. on the part of children if it is convenient for you set up plans that helps to take care of your children when they are aged Plans like the Fed Annuity Plan, so that they'll be getting like their payment for the rest of their life, so you don't have to worry Plans about Plans for their them. children or their, their parents? Their parents. Yeah. The children can set up different type of plans. You know, it, can, it will just cost them small amount of yeah. money, so that when their parents are retired, they will have something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. I think that it's called the Fed Annuity Plan, so that mm -hmm. you don't have to start begging and senior things are suffering. They are really bottom suffering. line, and we just hope it's it's a whole it's a chain of a whole lot. You have talked about the fact that people should plan, change the mindset of saying my children are my retirement plan. There's a whole lot going on now in the society, so have your own plan, and children can also have their own plan, which is what he has come Sorry, out to say. A very important addendum: children who wants to prosper should have plan for their parents. You know, if you are looking for contracts, you are not getting it. You are looking for whatever, you are not getting it. If you want to have transgenerational blessings, take care of your parents. Very important. And that's where we leave it now. Author and policy strategist, Batunde Raimi, thank you for your time you. on the program.